Hello, this video objective is to try to answer one single question. How do turbo machines work? What we know is that they are devices which transform one kind of energy into another, either providing it to a fluid or absorbing the energy from it. But what equations rule this phenomena? What laws? The answer is obvious. Like every non-relativist phenomena, fluids are ruled by classical mechanics laws. There's only a little problem. The classical equations work well with a few particles or rigid body system, but it seems impossible to apply it to all the exactly looking moving particles of a fluid flow. So, what can we do? Do we observe each molecule individually and follow what happens to them like a paparazzi will do? How many molecules we have to observe to measure the properties? One? A few? A billion? Do we watch to a particular place and see how properties of the different particles change, as if we were looking through a rear window? What we are going to do is use equations invented more than a century ago. This is the third theorem of transport of Reynolds, the mathematical expression which allows us to perform a balance in over a fluid control volume. A control volume is a mathematical abstraction. It is a volume fixed in a space or moving with constant velocity through which the fluid flows. The surface enclosing the control volume is referred to as the control surface. The control volume is just an imaginary room with entrance and exit doors. The Greek letter phi represents the property that we want to measure. It's an intensive property that we are integrating to measure the variation of the corresponding extensive property. The first term represents the variation of the property inside the control volume that occurs in a precise instant. We call it temporal term. The second term represents the variation of the property in cause of contribution of the entries or exits of fluid particles through the control surface. We call it convective term. We are going to apply it to analyze the next properties. Mass, linear momentum and angular momentum. Conservation of mass. The mass of the system will remain constant. With a simple transformation, we can work with an integral of volume instead of mass. Applying the third theorem of transport, when phi equals to rho, we obtain the next expression. Now, we are going to apply the expression to a very simple problem. This is our control volume. As you can see, the control surface is surrounding a nozzle through which a current of liquid of certain density flows. The liquid enters to the control volume through surface 1 and exits through surface 2. We suppose a steady state, so the first term is zero. The control volume remains static. The liquid cannot flow through the lateral surface because the wall prevents it. Finally, we obtain a simple balance of mass. Conservation of linear momentum. The process is the same, but now applied to Newton's second law. The variation of the linear momentum of a system only changes when external forces are applied. We transform the linear momentum into an integral of volume expression. Now we apply the third theorem of Reynolds. We also transform the forces into the same kind of integral expression. Forces are divided into superficial forces, like pressure or viscous forces, and volume forces, like gravity, electrical or magnetic fields, or even Jedi. Normally, only gravity takes place. Applying it to our control volume, we obtain this. And the global expression comes to this. Conservation of angular momentum. 
as you are going to see, the deduction of the resultant equation has high similarity with the deduction made with the linear momentum. That's because the angular momentum is the rotational analog of linear momentum. The variation of linear momentum is originated by forces. And the variation of angular momentum is originated by the momentum of the forces, the torque. The same kind of equations but with the rotational magnitudes. The linear magnitudes of the previous case are now multiplied by the reference vector r. Remember, it's a cross product. And that's the equation obtained by applying the third theorem of transport to conservation of angular momentum. The conservation of angular momentum may be the most important of the three formulas. The fundamental equation of turbo machines, the Euler equation, comes from this expression. That's all for this video. I hope you find it useful and now you are ready to understand some other concepts, in particular the fundamental equation of turbo machines. Thank you for your time.